Hello, and welcome to the Big Bang. Today, let's talk about the Law of Total Probability, the LTP, and Bayes' Rule, BR. These underlie almost everything in probability, but underneath these is the single probability concept, known as conditional probability. If you understand conditional probability, you're golden. Let's take a closer look at conditional probability. This is in chapter 1.4 in your textbook. Once we say A given B, we narrow down the sample space to outcomes that occur in just event B. Since all probabilities are based on the entire sample space, we can rewrite the numerator and denominator with the formula for finding an event for equally likely outcomes. Proofs are important because when you do them, you have a better understanding of whatever you're trying to prove. If you want a great tool for solving problems that entail conditional probability, use tree diagrams. Here's how tree diagrams work. Multiply along the branches from left to right. Add down the columns top to bottom. A good check is that the probabilities added in a column will sum to 1. Can you think about why they do that? When constructing tree diagrams, remember to check if the events are independent or dependent. Remember, if they are independent, then the probability of B given event A is just equal to the probability of B. We can see how multiplication along the branches works by rearranging the formula for conditional probability. Going back to the law of total probability and Bayes' rule, why are the LTP and BR so important? They're workarounds for when you want a certain probability, P of A, but you cannot find it directly from the information at hand. Let's see how the LTP is derived. Given that A is a subset of sample space S. First, take a partition of sample space S. Call them B1 and B2. We know the union of a partition is the sample space. We also know that the subset A is equal to the intersection of A and S. So by plugging in steps 2 and 3, we get a new formula that can be rearranged within the distributive law. By definition of partition, B1 and B2 are disjoint, so any intersection of A and B sub I will also be disjoint. Using probability axiom number 3, the unions of those intersections are the summation of the probabilities of those intersections, since those intersections are disjoint. Recall the definition of conditional probability for this last step. Here's a visual of how the LTP works. Do you see how the event A overlaps with both B1 and B2? And the parts that overlap with B1 and B2 do not overlap with one another. Well therefore, A becomes a sum of A intersect B1 and A intersect B2. We are not limited to just two partitions. We can extend beyond two partitions of S based off of the info given in the problem. But how do we prove Bayes' rule? First, use the definition of conditional probability to get the probability of A given B, and the probability of B given A. We know the intersection of A and B is the same as the intersection of B and A. So with some algebra, we can get a formula that links probability of A given B and probability of B given A. So how do you solve a problem using Bayes' rule? Well, usually we want to find the probability of B given A, but we only have information for probability of A given B. With a tree diagram, you can find the probability of A intersect B by multiplying left to right. Then, use the formula for conditional probability to find the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersect B divided by probability of B and then use the law of total probability to find the denominator of Bayes' rule. Do you see how everything in probability builds on top of one another like Lego bricks? So in summary, chapter 1.4 in the textbook is very important. Refer to it often. When we are given certain information, but not necessarily about the event A, which is of interest, we are most likely dealing with conditional probability. So, draw a tree diagram. See if you can use the law of total probability and or Bayes rule. Good luck and have fun.